Hi everyone, and welcome to this brief video on seven learning activities that you can use with your students in Google Jamboard. My name is Erica Smith, and I'm an associate professor and faculty development consultant in the Academic Development Center at Mount Royal University. Feel free to follow me on Twitter for more tips or to ask me questions, and I'll provide my email at the end of this video. So first off, just to say there are a lot of technical settings in Google Jamboard that you'll want to know for just creating and setting something up. The good news is that Jamboard is a very simple and straightforward tool, but obviously that simplicity can mean that there are some drawbacks in particular situations that you'll want to be aware of. I'm not going to go over a lot of the technical setup today, but I do have a handout that you can access through the short URL or through the QR code, and I'll be sure to put that up at the end of the video too. If you have any follow-up questions, you can click on the links, and there's lots of help available for setup types of questions here. So today what we're going to focus on is the central question of what learning activities can be created using Google Jamboard. And because I work in higher education, the focus here really is on higher education classrooms. And I've identified seven types of learning activities from brainstorming all the way up to annotation and elaboration skills and gathering feedback. And these kinds of activities can scaffold together so you can use them as one-offs or you can use them together. And I've provided on that handout some tips and tricks for how you might want to integrate those activities together if you're interested. So just a couple of quick things to point out. I will be using different frames today. And at the top here is where you can see the various frames. They look like pages, but Google Jamboard calls them frames. So I'll use that as a way to demonstrate and give a little bit of a tour of those seven activities. Again, you can click on the handout links for more information on the technical setup. But this sidebar here is really where all of the stickies things like the marker or pen tool, you can click through and select uh, different types of drawing tools. That's going to really be key in terms of helping you to understand what some of the key affordances are through this Jamboard tool. Finally, any type of activity that we're talking about here invites collaboration. And so you'll want to be sure that you share this with whoever you're collaborating with. That might be a fellow instructor. By default, whoever creates the Jamboard is the owner, and you can add editors or transfer ownership just like you do in a Google Doc. But here, what I'm going to want to do is make sure that I change this link and you can change it either to Mount Royal or in this case, I'm going to say anyone with a link can edit this Jamboard. So that way I know that my students, when I share the link with them, which I can copy here and paste into a chat or a discussion board, I know that they'll be able to edit that tool regardless of whether they're logged in to the Mount Royal Gmail suite or not. If you want them to have to log in, however, you'll want to use that Mount Royal University setting. Okay, with a few of those really brief technical things out of the way, let's get into the activities piece. So starting off here with brainstorming activities. Brainstorming is one of the most simple and fun activities that you can do with your students. So what I recommend here is starting with a sticky note tool. That's what I've used to put a central question that will guide the brainstorming activity. So I teach an undergraduate class called Effective Learning in the Undergraduate Context. And I want my students in this case to engage with this question, have a brainstorm around how can you effectively learn during your undergraduate experience? So that's the question that I would invite them to contribute to. And basically what they're going to do, and I can contribute here as well if I'd like, is just add some sticky notes. So they may say something like metacognition, you know, learning about learning. That's a way that I can help promote effective learning while I'm an undergraduate student as being a metacognitive thinker. Normally I give my students about five or 10 minutes of time to do a brainstorm while we're in a synchronous session. You can play music or ask them to come back at the end of the activity to your synchronous Google Meet. Or if you're teaching this asynchronously, feel free to post the link to a discussion forum and have students do this throughout the week. Just be sure to give them a sense of how long they should spend on this.
So we can see at the end of this, there are so many things that students will put onto the Jamboard. This is just an example. They'll use all different colors in many cases. I just encourage you to think about having that central question defined. And then later on, we're going to talk about how we can group and connect these things. But of course, it's, it can just be as simple as, you know, you can just move things together that have those connections as a starting place. You know, simple color coding or grouping together of things really becomes easy in this brainstorming activity. So that's the first activity that we are going to look at today. Now next, building off of this, you might have students identify or vote for a particular thing that they're supposed to be developing associations or relationships between. So in this case, I have created a central question, which is focusing on self-regulated learning or what we call SRL. And I'm asking students to think about and then identify which things on the screen most closely relate to that concept of self-regulated learning. So what I'm going to do is again, give them some time to fill this out. And I can invite them to use this pen tool and just put a check mark beside the things that they think are most closely associated with self-regulated learning. So you might have a sense of, you know, various check marks depending on the number. You can ask students to provide a star on something or a check mark, really easy, and then count up the number of things. Now there also is the add image function. So if you wanted to search for, here I'm just gonna search for a check mark and lots of check marks come up. So if I wanted to use a check mark function and provide that even by default, I could search for that and ask students to um, move the check mark. You can make it smaller if you want. It's a very large check mark. There we go. Uh, beside the things that they think are where they want to place their vote or where they want to identify something, you can just easily copy and paste that over so that you're using an, a graphic icon. But essentially the easiest part of this is that you get to have students pick or vote which option and then have a bit of a discussion. You know, why is it that they think performance and metacognition are more closely related to self-regulated learning than memorization? And in this case, the answer is because those things are mentioned in some of the readings through Zimmerman's three-phase self-regulated learning process, for example. So just another way here to get students to actively engage. You know, of course there are things like polling to tools, but you might want to have more of an organic multi-page or multi-frame Jamboard happening. And this is one way that you can do that. So next, we did a bit of a brainstorm earlier. And just to follow up on this idea of sorting and grouping, you know, of course, we know that as we become experts in something, we are we get better at chunking and grouping like things together. And we want to build those skills in our students as well and give them opportunities to practice those skills. So in this case, I've used as my inspiration some romantic and Victorian literature ideas. And imagine that your students have put these things on the Jamboard already through a brainstorm, or perhaps you want to save some time and identify identify things for them and provide them as I have here. So what we're going to do is just start to group and sort things together. And you can actually create labels for things either through the sticky note function or through the text box function on this navigation on the left hand side of the screen here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sticky note of a different color to create my label. And I'm going to make three labels here. So I see three things happening in the brainstorm. One is we are mentioning the different texts that we have covered during class. Um, so I'm going to put that as a um, initial label here. Another thing that I see coming out here is the key themes of the course and in the literature that we're studying. So I'm going to put themes as another box and a label. And then finally, the third label here is I'm going to say that we, we need some examples. So we know where are these things happening or what do they look like? So those are the three things. You can label them anyway, and uh, this is just a basic example, but starting to move things together, you know, I can see that Jane Eyre, The Woman in White, Frankenstein, and Dracula are all texts that we're engaging with in this particular example. So that's great. Um, again, it would be really easy for me to edit these and make them all the same color as the label if I wanted to group them by color. Unfortunately, the size of the text is scaled so that obviously if you have letters like Jane Eyre, it becomes, you know, larger than Frankenstein because of the way that the text itself is scaled. And there's not really a lot we can do about that in Jamboard. I don't find it's too big of a deal. If we wanted to look at some themes and categorizing those things, maybe I'll make those orange. Okay, so I have all my themes in the same color 
here and we can see these groupings are just starting to flow together naturally now. Now finally if I want to make my examples into blue right we can we can take a look at those so we can look at particular passages or um, devices that are used that relate to these overall themes in romantic and Victorian literature and in the texts that we're exploring and then after we have these groupings we can also start to make connections between things so just using the pen or the marker tool here you know I can start drawing together typewriters and recording devices are an example of technology and we could say that um, you know that happens in some particular texts and start drawing those relationships in as we're sorting and grouping. So this is a really great way to have a next step from a brainstorming which is helping students to identify and make connections between things. Now we'll talk a little more about other ways to create connections later but this is a, a really simple one but a pretty illustrative one too. Next we're going to look at comparing and contrasting. So what I've done here to start out with is I've created a sticky note but I've made it the clear version of the sticky note. And this is another case where um, I can draw a line between things if I want to really create two divisions, almost like a table. So I'll go ahead and use my marker tool. And just a tip here, if I hit the shift button, then I can create a straight line, which is kind of a nice thing to be able to do. So if I want people to create a bit of a table when they're creating their responses, lines on the page can help to do that. So here I would just, uh, you know, show students a brief video that follows up on the readings. It's about two minutes long by Carol Dweck on the topic of growth mindset and fixed mindset. And this is a really great comparing and contrasting. So there's two phenomenon here that we can compare and contrast. And again, I would give students a few minutes to do this. And basically, this is the kind of thing I would get by the end of it that students would have on the Jamboard by the end. Okay, so this is about the kinds of things that I would have. Of course, if you have or upwards of 40 students in your class, you might create two jam boards. By the end of it, you get a lot of contributions and you can start to have a bit of a discussion comparing and contrasting the two different sides of things and taking a look at those concepts in comparison to each other. Next, we're gonna look further at connecting concepts together. So here again, I've just taken some inspiration from King Lear, Shakespearean text, and I have a preset list here on the stickies of characters. First, you know, we could look at and ask students for ways to connect together the facets of these characters in the story. So what we might do is look at the central figure, King Lear in this case, and ask students, again, using that, that drawing tool, what are some of the connections that can be made in terms of the fall of King Lear? So we might use our marker tool and start creating a bit of a relationship between things said in the text and the character of the fool. That would be a really straightforward one to do. Now, if you wanted to create more of a hierarchy you could also do that and um, I can erase my lines here just by using the undo button or using the eraser tool which is right here and in this case I have a blank uh, slate again as it were except for the stickies and what I'm going to do is I can create and show a hierarchy based on family relationship many of these characters on this side of the screen are King Lear's children and their spouses so if I wanted to create that hierarchy, right? What I could do is, is to show that. Okay, so it's not necessarily beautiful, but it illustrates the point here that, you know, if you wanted to have a hierarchy based on something like parents and children, King Lear is the parent, he's the father, his children are here, and then some of their spouses are noted by an overlapping square and a dotted line. But this just gives you a sense of how hierarchies could be shown and connected. And if you're teaching something like science or other types of concepts that have parent-children relationships or hierarchies, then this is a, an interesting way to get students to work on illustrating those concepts. Okay. So next, annotating and elaboration. And we know that students really benefit from the ability to annotate and to also elaborate on concepts that they're given to uh, add to those things. And when they're able to do it in a group setting, all the better. It's really an engaging opportunity. In this case, what I've done is I've provided a definition in regard to the question, what is digital literacy? And the definition according to the American Library Association is the ability to use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, create, and communicate information 
information requiring both cognitive and technical skills. So what we could do here is change to a highlighter feature. And if I wanted to, I could ask students to do this or I could do the first one and then have them do subsequent ones. And I could highlight some of the key parts there. So perhaps we're looking at what kinds of skills that are involved in developing digital literacies. And here we can talk about cognitive and technical skills and have some discussion about are there any other kinds of skills that we want to have folks uh, engaging with, maybe sociocultural skills, those kinds of things that we could insert. So if we wanted to insert something, I could use the text feature and write that in so that it's on there as well. I could ask students in groups of four or five to pick one of the five colors available here and have them indicate different parts. So here we might look at ICTs. What kinds of ICTs? Are we talking about social media? Are we talking about other kinds of things? So this is a great way in small groups or as a class to have the ability to show and highlight parts of a quotation or a definition that you're engaging with. Now, an even better way, if you have images or maps that you're using in the class, I'd like to show you here, um, there are a number of examples on this chromebook.com Jamboard activities URL. This is in my handout and just be sure to take a look at that. The author is John Sowash and uh, he provides lots of examples, including actually Jamboard board templates. Now, a lot of these are framed for more of a K-12 audience, which is why I've contextualized and provided some examples more for higher education. But in particular, there are a couple here that I think are really fantastic for adapting for something like a literature class or some something where you're doing annotation and getting students to comment on things. Um, so I think this is a great example here. I'm just going to zoom in on this example of an image that's provided. And you can actually have a number of different ways to engage and mark up and annotate that image in order to analyze it as a small group or as a class. And like I said, the templates are here. So if I click on annotation station template, I can make a copy of that from John's website. It'll save it in my Google Drive. And here he has a number of other examples. So artistic examples, historical examples. If you're using anything with maps, uh, here's an example of identifying the northern and southern states or perhaps different major battles of World War II and where those happened. So lots of potential here for going deeper. Maybe you're teaching a medieval literature class and you want to look at a map and have some interaction with the map. And again here, what you can do is have students, you know, draw or highlight. So you could have them um, circle and annotate or place a star on things uh, that are relevant. So some great examples from John here. And like I said, take a look in the handout for more. Finally, there's a seventh activity, which I think is really worthwhile mentioning. I talked to a couple of professors in the fall who would actually start off with a Jamboard at the beginning of their class. And they would use it as a check-in opportunity just to see how students are doing. And students would come in to the online class, a synchronous session through Google Meet, and then go to the Jamboard and put a sticky note just reflecting how they were doing. Or maybe the question of the day was, what TV have you been watching lately? Just a, a good community building kind of touching a base activity that was pretty fun and easy to do in Jamboard. Now you've probably heard of different kinds of formative feedback tools. This one is called Start, Stop, Continue. And it's just a really basic way if you're wanting to get feedback on a lesson and to gauge if things are clear or not, you can create these three columns and just have students provide, even during a break, some ideas on what's working well, what could change, and what needs to be added. I got a lot of feedback that Jamboards were engaging in my class in the fall. So um, when I did this type of activity, actually I did mine through a Google form, but you could easily do it through a Jamboard. You know, start doing more Jamboards because uh, we were doing them sometimes, but they wanted to do them more often. And in the stop column, you could get feedback about something that would be useful to their learning that you could change. A useful way to get feedback from students that's informal, that helps them to see the feedback that is coming in from other students as well. And this is another case where you could say, you know, if you see something that is really resonating with you and you don't want to write it again, just feel free to put a check mark beside it. And then I will know that other students are also agreeing with that. So as I mentioned, there's a handout that helps with a lot of these as follow ups. It's a written summary of these tips as well well as links out to examples from the different sites I showed today and from further help guides from Google and our Academic Development Center. So be sure to check that out. There's a QR code you can use your phone here or just use the short URL. Or if you have any questions, please do get in touch with me. My name is Eric Smith and my email and Twitter is on there. If you'd like to get in touch, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. And good luck with your Jamboards. Hope it goes well.